I want to talk a little bit about style and how to make this piece pop and how to add the extra things. Now, you want to develop the, the base of your technique hierarchy first. You want to make sure that they've got good tone. You want to make sure that they've got good tuning. And they're going to need to stay together. So they're going to need to have good rhythm. Otherwise, if they're, they're falling apart, you know, it, it's, it's not going to make much of a difference no matter what they do. But style is important in clog dance, and it's important for a, a few different reasons. And, and one of them is because with, with style, that's where your conducting can come in to give the orchestra the style they need, and that's when they have to start watching you. Let's first talk about the dynamics. In clog dance, we have a range of dynamics from fortissimo down to mezzo piano. I like to simplify this. I like to reduce the dynamic by one level so that we adjust our range to forte down to piano. And another thing that I like to do is I like to give a number value to each of the dynamic markings. So piano is one, mezzo piano two, mezzo forte three, forte four. When your students are practicing their rhythms with a metronome and you're trying to develop that consistency so that they don't rush, you can give your students what dynamic to play with your left hand and that way they have to watch you and they can't just stare up at the sky or something like that. They're watching you and you're engaged and you're providing them information that they're not getting from the metronome. You can also beat time while giving them the dynamic indicators and that way Again, they're required to watch you and you want to get their heads out of the music and start watching you just in case something goes wild during the performance and you got to be able to get your students back. If they're not used to watching you and you're used to just setting them up with a metronome and going, or even worse, if you conduct the time along with the metronome, there's no reason for them to watch you. And if something starts getting out of hand at that point, there's really nothing that you can do to get them back during that performance. You can set up all of your rhythms this way. The pepperoni pizza rhythm, four quarter notes, you can set it up that way. You can separate, you can do two half notes. You can do the quarter note, quarter rest, quarter note, quarter rest. Every rhythm in this piece, you can practice, you know, just uh, repeating over and over again on open strings and you can give them their dynamics so that they understand the dynamics and how it associates with the rhythms. In measure 47 and 48, we get this cool crescendo here, and it's the only written crescendo in clog dance, so we should probably try to make the most out of it. And you can practice that too. I like to have everybody play four quarter notes and four quarter notes again, and just practice getting louder. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as, as, they, as they get louder coming into 49, and then we can start playing and the rhythms that they have written but on an open D string so that the first violins can rest on beat one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or we get the half note rhythms for, for the second violin viola part. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so that they learn how to crescendo there and finally add the left hand back in. At 31, when students are playing at their softest here, it's marked mezzo piano, but I changed that to piano. Students have the tendency when they're playing soft to use less pressure with the left hand, and we need to make sure that they're pressing the string down firmly enough with the left hand. This is pizzicato here, except in the first violin part at 35, their arco, but if they're not pressing the string down hard enough, you should be able to hear that in the sound and that they're not going to get a ringing sound. The, the fingered B here in the cello part is not going to resonate. So listen for that and, and make sure that they're always forte with the left hand. There is some opportunity for vibrato here. And even with a beginning orchestra, if you're playing this on your spring concert, Hopefully they've been exposed to a little bit of vibrato and they don't have to go crazy fast like machine gun vibrato. They can just do a little bit of vibrato on some of these half notes like first violins, for instance, at 35 can do just a little bit of vibrato here. And then at 43, pretty much everybody can use vibrato. Everybody can do just a little wiggle, little wiggle, little wiggle just to practice their vibrato and it just, it just adds something. It adds more style. It adds more character to the piece. 
you know, they don't have to overdo it just a little bit, just, just a little wiggle on each half note. Everybody can do that. First violins also have some slurs. They've got slurs here in measure 41, and they've also got slurs in 45. So that gives them some practice playing nice long bows with the slurs. Um, in 41, they even have a, a string crossing, unless you're going to practice that fourth finger to third finger, which might be a good idea. Um, but a lot of orchestras will just play two open knees there in that measure. But they'll, they'll be slurring and they'll have to cross strings, which is going to be its own challenge. So you might want to work with them on that for their style. A lot of times I think the quarter notes are played too short in clog dance, particularly when the quarter notes followed by quarter rest. And at the ends of phrases, we'll sometimes clip that third note short, and it's just a, not the best way to end a phrase. So make sure they're playing those quarter notes long. And, you know, where they have the double stops, quarter, rest, quarter, rest. Again, full bow set, full bow set, so that they can play nice and rich I think that's more appropriate to the style here. And then finally, I want to talk about the final measure. And in this final measure, we've got accents on the last five notes. Now, the thing about this is, if every note is accented, are there any accents? So what does Del Borgo really want here? It's not like one note that we're supposed to highlight. It's, it's every note. So I think what... Del Borgo wants here is that he just he just wants more weight on these last five notes. Okay, not so much weight that we're bending the pitch flat. So make sure that it's it's an appropriate amount of weight, but just a little extra for those five notes, just to really drive home the point of the. Well, it's not pepperoni pizza because we rest on beat four, but it's like pepperoni pizza. Style is important in this piece. Sometimes if we, if we don't add that style, if we play the quarters too short or if we're not working with dynamics, we lose opportunities to fix problems like rhythm or we lose opportunities to show styles with, with our gesture. And that's going to hurt us in the performance because not only is it going to be less interesting to, to listen to for the audience, but the students have no reason to watch you as a conductor if you're not providing them with information that they need to see. And if something goes wrong, you're less likely to be able to fix it or get the orchestra back if you're losing a section or even losing the whole orchestra. So I, I definitely recommend that you don't leave out the style for clog dance and that you try to incorporate all of the details that it contains.